Welcome to the problem 1937 from Lika.com. So in this problem, we are given a 2D integer array, where in general case, the number of rows and columns equals M and M respectively. And what we need to do is all about gaining as many points as we can by picking exactly one cell in each row. And at this point, you might say, wait, in order to maximize the amount of points, we greatly need to grab the max in each row. And you're absolutely right. However, there is a little extra condition which makes this problem a bit tricky. So what this condition is about? Well, imagine for every two adjacent rows, picking cells at coordinates i p0 and i plus 1 p1 will subtract the absolute difference between p1 and p0 from our score. The following formula describes that we need to find such a combination of cells where the sum of points will be the max with a given condition. Also, we do have some restrictions along with this problem. The important thing to know is that we will not have any problems with allocating memory for the matrix, and the points are non-negative integers from 0 up to 10 power by 5. So, let's take a look at some given examples in order to understand the problem statement better. In this case, the combination which gives us the maximum amount of points is the following, and the sum of those points is going to be equal to the 9. So, for the second one, the max combination is the following cells, and the answer which we need to return is going to be equal to 11. Alright, let's have a look again at our example. It is always good to start with something simple in order to check whether you have got the problem statement or not, whether you are thinking the right way or not. Even if you know the problem, take your time to verify your thoughts. Okay, so here P max is 9, right? But how do we know which cells to pick? Okay, maybe it's a good idea to generate all possible combination of cells and return the max one among them. It looks good. Let's make it happen. By picking the first cell in the first row, we do have three remaining cells to pick in the next row, right? Well, let's simply pick the first one as well. And for the third, once again, we do have three cells to pick. Let's pick the first one again. So, our first combination gives us 5 points. So, now let's generate another combination. In this case, we do have the same cells for the first and for the second rows, but now in the third, we are picking the second one, because the first one is already picked for P1. And for this combination, we have got 2 points, and so on. Eventually, we'll end up with 27 combinations for this example. And after generating all possible combinations, we simply need to grab the max one as we decided earlier. And that's pretty much it. Well, if we are talking about the efficiency of such an approach, the time complexity is obviously going to be exponential, right? But can we somehow turn it into polynomial time complexity? So let's find it out. Okay, we are bringing back our given table and trying to optimize our previous approach, which runs on exponential time, right? Well, if you already have some work in brute force solution, always try to think whether it's possible to cache some useful information about the data so you prevent some blind brute force. But what exactly should we cache? Alright, let's create some DP matrix where DPIJ stands for the max points we already gained at points IJ. Mostly, caching requires something to start with. Well, after picking a cell at points 0, 0, we don't need to pay any cost, right? Therefore, the max points at point 0, 0 is going to be 1, and the same for the second and for the third in the first row. So these are our base values, right? And remember that we are going from the top to the bottom. If we are trying to go from the bottom to top, the base values are going to be equal to the last row of the points matrix, because we are starting by picking those cells. Now, by having base values to work with, we simply need to compute DPIJ for the rest of the cells. Once again, what is DPIJ? It is the max points we already gained at points IJ. Okay, let's try to compute the max values for the second row. Well, in order to do that, we simply need to answer the queries like how many points we can gain if we somehow came to the current cell from 0 0.00, 0 0.01, or 0 0.02 in this particular case. Well, it turns out that the max points we can achieve by coming to this cell equals 2, 
because we already have one point for being in the points one zero and another point from the previous row. All right, what about the second one? Here we can get five points because we are standing in that cell and two from the previous row and so on. So after such computation, the answer for this whole problem equals the max points in the last computed row. Well, let's complete our computation and see what happened. So as we decided earlier, the answer is the max in the last computed row. So in this case, just nine. Okay, so the time complexity here becomes of f of m times n times g of n, where g of n described that in order to compute the max points at a specific cell, we simply need to get the max from the previous row. And it takes linear time for each cell, which we are computing for. Well, that's a good one because we hugely optimized our approach by simply saving max points we already gained. I also do have a CPP code listing for that described approach. Of course, we'll get time limit exceeded for that by now, but that's not the point here. Most important is to strongly understand the logic behind caching. I strongly recommend you to implement it yourself in order to have a better vision. As we decided earlier, we somehow need to figure out about the base values for our DP. Then it's all about computing DPIJ for the whole points matrix and getting the answer. In this case, it's just the max in the last row. By the way, if you look closely, my DP matrix is a copy of points. Well, you can do that as well because it doesn't really matter if they are equal to zero or just some random values. Most important is to get our base values. Now it's time to make it more efficient than that by simply getting rid of G of n from the time complexity. Before diving into our most efficient approach, I do have a quick intro about how pre-computation might be helpful, especially where we need to deal with some queries. There are popular pre-computation techniques like computing prefix sums, computing prefix product, prefix source, some prefixes on strings, and etc., which significantly optimize the time complexity to operate with queries. So it takes one time to pre-compute them, and after that we can easily get what we computed earlier. For instance, the sum on some specific prefix of an array or the max value in the prefix, or on the suffix of the given immutable array. That's exactly what I'm going to show you right now. Imagine having some random integer array, and along with it we do have some queries such that the max in the prefix is basically the max from the beginning up to some ith index, and the max in the suffix where it stands for the max value from the ith position up to the end of the array. Okay, let k stands for the amount of such queries. In the usual case, to answer such queries requires linear time per each query. But what happens if we decide to pre-compute it once, and after that just simply getting an answer for the constant time per each query? In order to do that, let's say prefix max i, it is exactly the max value in the prefix, and suffix max i, max value in the suffix. Let's see how we can pre-compute them. In order to make it easy to implement, we'll have an additional element in the beginning. Basically, it means that the max value before the first element equals zero. So the max before the second element in our array equals the max between the previous value and the current from our array and so on. Well, in case of the suffix max, we do have the same concept, but here, since we need to keep an answer for what is a max value on the right side from the certain element, we need to start from the end. Basically, for the prefix max, we are keeping our max values going from the left to the right, but for suffix, just vice versa. I'll provide code listing on how to basically compute them. So here is just basic initialization process, then computing suffix maxes, and prefix maxes as well. Of course, there are a bunch of ways to compute it, but I personally prefer adding an extra element in order to simplify working with indices. It's getting hard to work carefully with indices when it comes to computing 2D or multiple dimension prefixes or suffixes. Okay, now comes the beauty of this problem. Once again, we do have our points table and DP table as well, and we are gonna try to compute those DP values. All right, the base values are here and we are ready to start. Let's pick some random cell from the current line which we are calculating for. We already know how to calculate that in linear time, 
while basically looking at the previous row and trying to find the best cell to come from which is maximizing our points at the current cells. But what about the constant time per query? Okay, we do have six available cells to come from, right? But if we look closely, maybe we can somehow operate with only the left and the right blocks of the previous row, just instead of checking every single cell. But what are those left and right blocks? Well, it turns out that they are exactly the prefix and the subject of the previous row. We already know how to pre-compute the prefix maxes, right? So let's make it happen. Here, after looking at the formula for prefix maxes, you might ask, why we're subtracting one from the prefix max of j? Well, it's because remember, we need to pay a cost whenever we are about to shift either to the left or to the right side. So using the same logic, let's compute the suffix maxes as well. After doing that, you might see the main reason behind this beautiful approach. I'm pretty sure that you already know what I'm talking about right now. So let's go back to our highlighted cell. Basically, we want to compute the max amount of points we gain at the highlighted cell, right? So in the previous approach, we were trying to get the max by looking at every single value from the previous row, right? Here, we don't need to do that because we already have an answer for queries like what is the max on the left and on the right side from the highlighted cell. Therefore, we simply can grab the max between them and add it up to our overall points at the certain cell. It's hard to believe, but that's pretty much it. This is an excellent problem to represent the power behind of pre-computation techniques. Once again, we do have some base values. After that, we are computing our prefix maxes and suffix maxes based on those values, and we are ready to compute our DPIJ for the i throw. And after computing the whole DP table, you know what to do, right? It, it's all about grabbing the max from the last computed row in our DP table. And that would be the answer for the problem. I've prepared the code listing for this approach as well, but it's not necessarily needed because you already know how to compute the pref max and sub maxes, right? Basically, the problem is all about pre-computing them carefully. So the first part is all about basic initialization. And then by having base values, we simply can start to compute DPIJ for the rest rows. Well, here I just created left to right and right to left arrays as prefix maxes and suffix maxes respectively. But you might notice that there is no extra element there. As I said, it's also possible to compute them. And I just wanted to show you how to do that in this way as well. But you can compute with an extra element in the beginning as well. It's, it's pretty much okay. After that, we do have our prefix and suffix pre-computations. And the last part is like all about computing our actual DPIJ values for the current row. Eventually, we have our answer and we are ready to return it as a max value in the last computed row of the DP table. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this gorgeous problem and wish you good luck on your journey.